Hello everyone, my name is Ana Barrientos and today I'm going to be referencing the case of Nona Kaprundishvili v. Netflix. And while we go throughout this presentation, I would like you to keep this Japanese proverb in mind. We learn little from victory, but much from defeat. I am representing the plaintiff in this case and her defamation suit against Netflix. She has faced humiliation, distress, anguish, and loss of profits, and she is suing for $5 million. What is The Queen's Gambit? The drama miniseries is based off a story uh, by Walter Tevis of the same name and is set between the 1950s and 1968 and follows a female chess player. It was a huge series. It reached 62 million households within a month of its release and was nominated for several awards. So it's a very big deal. The false statement in question is the only unusual thing about her really is her sex and even that's not unique in Russia. There's Nona Kaprindershvili, but she's a female world champion and has never faced men. Now that statement is completely false. She was a pioneer in the industry and trailblazed past for other women. She started playing against men in 1962 and often defeated them. In fact, in 1965, she played 28 male chess players at one time. And by the time of 1968, when this statement was supposed to be made in the show, she had played 59 male chess players. Um, there's several reasons why Netflix owes the printers really damages. The first is a reckless disregard for the truth, actual malice, fact-based fiction, and the fact that she was singled out. Netflix acted with a complete disregard for the truth because they had Walter Tevis's novel to consult, and they also had two expert chess consultants, Gary Kasparov and Bruce Pandolfini, who was uh, Tevis's consultant. Now, if we look at the 1967 case of Curtis versus Butts, the Supreme Court set the standard of libel for public figures, and they were able to bring a defamation case if they were able to show highly unreasonable conduct constituting an extreme departure from the standards of investigating and reporting ordinar ordinarily adhered to by responsible publishers, end quote. So Butts won that case because he was able to prove to that the Saturday Evening Post was publishing statements that were false, and that's the same in this case. Now, going forward, we can look at another case in 1967, the Associated Press versus Walker. The plaintiff further proves her case for negligence and goes forward to actual malice. The original statement in the novel that it's based on was actually that she had met Russian grandmasters many times before. So Netflix is changing this with malicious intent. And not only did they change the line from the book, they refused to remove it, they refused to issue a retraction, and they refused to apologize. So although the, the series is a work of fiction, a reasonable person could assume that since the series contains names and stories of several notable chess players and elements of chess championships, that the statement about her is true as well. Unlike the 1980 case of Hustler versus Falwell, they cannot claim that it's a parody and any reasonable person would not consider this to be humor. A lot of chess players were actually named in the story, including Capablanca and Al Alakine. And these players who were referenced in the show were actually referenced positively. Caprindish really was the only one who was painted in a negative light. Capablanca was in a book. Alakine is mentioned and is praised to a player's aggressiveness as they go through the chess game. But Caprindish really was not only lied about, but she was also called a Russian when she is in fact Georgian. Now there are several things that Netflix is going to bring against us and say that it is not a defamation case because of these things, but I'm going to go through each one. Um, the first is that Netflix is going to say that their speech is protected because of their First Amendment rights, but actually we see in a case of Milkovich versus Lorraine that uh, opinions can be defamatory and the fact that this case is even able to go to court is proof that um, 
netflix cannot be able to go forward and make these defamatory statements against people just because they're fiction or opinions and if we look at the nine hundred seventy nine case of herbert versus lando we can see that it's not actually a super slippery slope to losing the right to free speech any defamation case regarding a public official a public figure is going to be have to prove actual malice and when we look at this case we can see that if they are suspected that this if the people who are publishing the story suspect that it has fossil than they still publish it then that's defamation and fact checking and requiring somebody to check their facts is not censorship and the burden of proof of actual malice is actually sufficient enough to protect first amendment rights to free speech now they're also going to say that people are just trying to sue because they have a lot of money but it's actually a pattern of behavior that the courts are seeing and we can see this in several cases that are currently under litigation right now including fair steam versus netflix jensen versus hill versus doc shop productions and colburn versus netflix netflix is even being accused of like coercing people into signing defamation statements and agreements and the last one is going to be that they're going to argue irrelevance the printers really is actually still playing in chess tournaments currently she just won an award back in 2019 and she still earns income off of her book called i prefer risk so just because she's 80 years old doesn't mean that she's not still a female role model and icon in the chess world now i want to go back and revisit that japanese proverb from the beginning um, because we must make sure that netflix sees defeat in this case so that they were forced to learn that just because they have status and power does not mean that they don't have an ethical responsibility to think about the lives of the subjects of their content. Making false statements about real people, even under the guise of fiction, can have serious repercussions to the mental, physical, and financial well-beings of real people. So, checkmate Netflix. Thank you for watching.